Breaking news on Connecticut's news station tonight as police investigate a homicide in one city in our state. We'll tell you what we've just learned in the last few minutes. Also, a major endorsement in Hartford's race for mayor. We're going to tell you who the Democratic Town Committee is throwing its support behind. And one mall in Connecticut implementing a curfew for teens on Saturdays. We'll tell you why it's making that decision. Breaking news now on Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. And we are following breaking news out of Hartford tonight. A man and a woman found dead. Good evening. I'm Ben Goldman. And I'm Jen Bernstein. Thank you so much for joining us. We want to get right out to Fox 61's DeAndrea Turner, who is live at the police department with what we know so far. DeAndrea. Well, Ben and Jen, police tell me they found a woman in her 20s and a man in his 30s dead in their apartment. This, come at, this comes after a wellness check was called for one of the victims. Now, police also say this happened around 715 this evening when that call came through. Police say they discovered them both dead with a gunshot wound in their Rust Street apartment. Right now, it's unclear how they both died, and police are investigating this possibly, this possibly being a case of either a murder-suicide or a double homicide. The woman's family was on scene today and emotions were extremely high as they learned the news, this being the 21st homicide in the city. Um, we know at this point in the investigation that the two individuals in the apartment have recently uh, recently tenanted there, they just moved in. Uh, we believe they are in some sort of a domestic relationship. Uh, we haven't ruled anything out yet this, at this time. This could be a double homicide or it could be murder-suicide. Again, we have a lot of... Uh, a lot of investigating to determine that, but uh, that's where we are now. Now, another thing they are investigating is exactly when this crime took place. I spoke to one neighbor today who told me that she made a 911 call Saturday evening when she said she heard a gunshot and screams coming from a woman inside of that apartment building. And police say they're now going through 911 calls to see if they can pinpoint anything. This is an active and ongoing investigation. And as we learn more, we'll update you on air, online and on our app. In Hartford, DeAndrea Turner, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. All right, D'Andrea, please keep us updated. All right, turning to the forecast right now, and this week it is all about the heat. We are about to feel those temperatures ramp up. They already are. Let's check in with Chief Meteorologist Rachel Frank for a first look at this sweltering forecast. Hi there, Rachel. Hi, we've got temperatures up near 90 degrees and a likely heat wave starting Wednesday and taking us through the rest of the week. But first, tomorrow, we do have a chance for a few scattered showers and thunderstorms before we can get there. We are dry right now, but we're looking at this line of showers and storms off to the west. This likely dissipates before it gets to us, although there is a slight chance for an isolated shower or rumble of thunder in northwestern Connecticut overnight. Otherwise, it is a mild night ahead with overnight lows in the upper 60s to right around 70 degrees. Tomorrow we'll start the day off bright, sunny and warm with temperatures beginning in the 60s to near 70. We'll see high temperatures in the mid 80s as we head through the afternoon with a rising chance for some scattered showers and thunderstorms as we head through the afternoon and into the early evening. The humidity starting to climb as well. After that, it is all about the heat. We're going to talk more about the timing and when it could feel like triple digits. Your full forecast coming up in just a bit. All right, Rachel, thank you. Connecticut's asking the federal government to help farmers who are dealing with significant flood damage in our state. The governor submitted the request to the USDA today. This comes after the state's Department of Agriculture determined 27 farms in Connecticut lost more than 1,500 acres and nearly $21 million in lost sales revenue. Well, we are following a very tragic story out of Hartford. A two-year-old boy is dead after falling from a third-story window. It happened on Capitol Avenue just after 3.30 Saturday afternoon. Hartford police say the child, along with four other kids under 12, were not were at home when, they fell, when he fell out of a building. No adults were there at that time. His mother, 34-year-old Tabitha Frank, is facing 10 charges tonight. She's free on bond and is due in court next month. Mayor Luke Bronin says the toddler's death is tragic. Our firefighters uh, respond every day to difficult calls, but I don't think there's anything more difficult than uh, finding a little child uh, who has been so seriously injured and trying so hard uh, to give life-saving uh, aid in response to that kid. Officers also say the boy's apartment was in deplorable conditions at the time of the incident. DCF has taken custody of the other children that were inside of that apartment. Police in East Hartford are investigating tonight after a man was shot and killed over the weekend. Officers say that they were called to Burnside Avenue just before 8 o'clock last night. 
When they arrived, they found the man dead. The shooting happened at a halfway house. Neighbors living nearby say that they're shocked. We've been here 11 years and we never had a problem with people over there. You know, I hired a few to pull weeds every now and then. We got a kid that runs it over there. We get along good with him. So I was surprised. Just stay safe. Stay out of the way. Usually you don't want to hang out in areas like this. Hartford police have not released the man's name yet, and officers are still looking for any suspects tonight. In New Haven, police are investigating after a person was injured in a shooting there. Investigators say 45 shots were fired near Sherman Parkway and Bassett Street a little after 11 last night. Shortly after the shooting, a gunshot victim arrived at the hospital to be treated. We're told that victim is expected to survive. And new attend a major endorsement in the race for mayor in the city of Hartford. The Democratic Town Committee voted tonight to back Arunan Arulampalam in September's primary. Fox 61's Gabby Molina was at tonight's committee vo vote. She joins us live outside of City Hall to tell us about the group's decision. And it was a big decision, Gabby. Absolutely, Jen, a huge decision in the race for mayor here in the capital city. Three candidates ended up getting nominated for the endorsement, but though only one could win the endorsement. Ultimately, it will be up to voters who the next mayor will be. The Hartford Democratic Town Committee voting to endorse Arunan Arulampalam for mayor. For this town committee to support me uh, and, and to back me as, as a standard bearer of this party, I think shows where the city is, that we're ready to come together, that we're ready to have one voice and one vision for our future. Arulampalam, CEO of the Hartford Land Bank, beat the two other nominated candidates Monday evening. State Senator John Fanfara and former State Senator Eric Coleman. Well, I'm pretty much expected tonight to go the way it did, and I'm looking forward to going the, going forward. The politicians have spoken. Uh, I'm very eager to see what the people will say. The candidates all vying to be the next leader of the capital city and looking ahead to the next steps in the process to get there. My campaign is composed of a lot of very hard-working, dedicated people. We've already been spoke phone banking and door knocking. I've lived in this city all my life and we deserve better. City Hall has to, city government has to take on the fundamental challenges of our city. Well, we've already hit the ground running. You know, we, we're knocking on doors, we're talking to people one-on-one. -on -one. I think we've got a groundswell of support out there uh, and that's what led to this nomination. Current Mayor Luke Bronin is not seeking re-election. He addressed the Democratic Party Monday evening, reflecting on his time in office. We've been through a lot over the last eight years. Uh, we went from near bankruptcy to recovery to a global pandemic to a new recovery. And calling for unity regardless of who the next mayor is. But when the politics ends, it's time to pull together and move forward as one Hartford and keep this city moving forward. Now, in addition to the two who received a nomination but not the endorsement, there are several other candidates running for Hartford mayor. All of them have until August 9th to collect enough signatures to end up on the ballot for the primary in September. Live in Hartford, Gabby Molina, Fox 61, Connecticut's news station. Thank you, Gabby. Well, new at 10, state police say a trooper stopped a wrong way driver going north on Route 8 South in Winstead. Police received several calls about the driver just before one this afternoon. After the car stopped, EMTs brought the woman driving to a hospital because she appeared disoriented. Her license was confiscated and will be reviewed by the DMV. She's also facing charges of reckless driving. 15 people have died in wrong way crashes so far this year. Governor Ned Lamont announcing an independent review of fall falsified reports of traffic records by state police here in Connecticut. It comes after an audit by the state's racial profiling prohibition project. It says in the past decade, hundreds of state troopers may have falsified nearly 26,000 traffic tickets. They're accused of making it appear more white drivers were being pulled over than non-white drivers. Former U.S. Attorney for Connecticut Deirdre Daly will be investigating that. And new attend, a Virginia man is accused of cyber stalking three Connecticut Superior Court judges. New Haven State's attorney says 62 year old Paul Boyne of Springfield, Virginia, was arrested and is awaiting extradition to Connecticut. Prosecutors say his arrest comes after a multi year investigation into a website called thefamilycourtcircus.com. Boyne used to live in Connecticut. He's accused of running the site and using posts to stalk and then threaten judges. Boyne is facing 18 felony charges. Well, new attempt tonight, a Seymour man is arrested after being accused of having, having sexual conversations online with a 13-year-old boy down in North Carolina. 
Seymour police say that Jesse Rollis faces eight charges tonight, including five counts of second degree sexual assault. Investigators say that they were being told by police in North Carolina about the sexual conversations with the teenage boy. Seymour police found evidence of the sexual assault of another victim in Connecticut. They also found child pornography photos. Rollis is a registered sex offender and wasn't allowed to have any internet connected devices. And new attend the Trumbull Mall says that it's adding a curfew for teens starting next month. The managing companies of the mall say it comes after feedback from shoppers and stores to promote a family friendly environment. Starting August 5th, anyone under 17 must be with a parent or adult older than 21 on Saturdays from 4 p.m. until the mall closes. Those supervising adults should be prepared to show ID. This comes after an incident on Memorial Day weekend. Two teens were being escorted out of the mall when one of them dropped a gun and it fired. No one was injured. We have much more